Hi, I'm Lion Rex Onosi and I've got good news for you. You've got to keep watching this space, all right? What's coming? It's the Influence of the Spirit podcast. You heard it right, the Influence of the Spirit podcast. We will be coming at you week after week with solid nuggets, solid points on how to increase your intimacy with the Holy Ghost, growing in revelation of who you are in Christ. Just walk him in that enhanced life that spirit walk life it's going to be exciting so please follow me on all social media handles instagram facebook twitter youtube this will be amazing it will be wonderful to grow together with you grow in the things of the spirit and in our walk you know and continuous exercise in the holy ghost so looking forward to having you follow all the conversations we'll be having it will be amazing Hi, my name is Larry Rex and welcome to my YouTube channel. Here we will be having a solid time with God's Word. We will learn who we are in Christ. Listen, there's so much God has put within us that makes the new creation, that's the born again person, the most treasured possession on this earth. Wow, <laughs> yes, and that's it really. So much to uncover. Bible says that God has put so much treasure in us. We have treasure in this earthen vessel. Imagine us week after week, episode after episode, digging in by revelation, by the help of the Holy Ghost, into all those amazing truths on who we are, what God is to us, what Christ has done for us. Imagine how much we would be, you know, edified and transformed. So please subscribe to this channel and then just turn on notifications so that once anything drops, you will be the first to know. It will be awesome being in this community with you. Looking forward to great times together. God bless you. Welcome. Hi. How you doing? So good to have you here. Yes, always great. Always great. Welcome again to our weekly episode of the Influence of the Spirit. What we learn, all right, and get exposed to, get, you know, open to the moves of the Spirit in our lives is just so exciting. Um, I know because it's called the Influence of the Spirit, you know, sometimes we want something very, like, um, spectacular. And, yeah, <laughs> We'll talk a bit about the spectacular, but there's just the everyday leadings and operations of the Holy Ghost in all our lives, all right? So I believe you're ready again for an exciting episode. Just in case you haven't, you could quickly um, send this to a friend, share. Yeah, just um, share whatever platform it is you're viewing from or listening from. You know, you could just, you know, share. Let someone know. Let somebody get blessed because we're dealing with, again, the work of the Spirit in the life of the believer. I trust that the past few episodes have been very exciting, very welcoming, you know, very like welcoming. So I, I believe that this all right, would in no way be different. So we'll go like we did last week. We began from John 14. So we're going to do that. We're spending, you know, a whole lot of time today in the Amplified, all right, version. So, so, so much, um, <laughs> basically so much time. All right. And then we're just going to run within and around it so we get it. All right, so John chapter 14, Bible is saying here, Jesus speaks uh, in John 14, verse 16 says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. So the Amplified here gives a sevenfold meaning. We have counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby. By the time you add comforter to that, it becomes seven. It says it may abide with you forever. So the word being broken down here is parakletos, all right? Helper, comforter. So you find the King James using helper, the right amplifier uses comforter. Now, by the time you look through all of this, you realize that basically it's all about the help of the Spirit. He's here to help you. Please understand this. Jesus, all right, died, was buried, resurrected, ascended, is seated. And we know that all that happened, he did for us. And then he did with us, all right. We died with him. He died for us, we died with him, all right? He was buried for us, buried with him, right? Resurrected for us, resurrected with him, right? Seated for us, was seated with him. You have to understand the two dimensional revelations. Number one is substitution, and then the other is identification. In the principle or the, the concept, allow me, which I'm not sure the, what concept might be necessarily wrong, all right? But in the teaching or the doctrine, of substitution, so, so much, so much revelational, all right? You understand what he's done for you, 
okay, himself took our infirmities, carried away our sicknesses, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, right, with his stripes were healed. We know that the Son of Man came to seek and to save them that were lost. So he took our pain, he took our sickness, he took our place, he did all that for us, all right? But then you take it a step further and begin to come into the revelation, okay, of identification. So there's the revelation of substitution, all right, him taking our place, a life for a life. Bible says the soul that sinneth will die. Remember that? So Romans 6 also now says the wages of sin is death. So he died our death, all right, that we may now have eternal life, all right? The wages of sin is death in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is that the gift of God is eternal life. So he took the wages of our sin. He took the punishment of our sin and then he gave us, gave us eternal life. Do you understand that? The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. So he took the wages of our sin. He took the punishment. He took the pain. And then he gave unto us eternal life. Beautiful. In the doctrine, in the revelation, all right, of identification, you begin to understand that I suffered together with him, all right? I was crucified with Christ. You get that, Galatians 2, okay? Then you remember, okay, that you were buried with him, Romans 6, says we're buried with him in baptism, all right? You realize that you were raised up together with him, and then you were made to sit together. So you start seeing, okay, that he didn't just do it for me, all right, according to the court of heaven, according to the ideal agenda of the father when he did these things i was with him now jesus knew that he was approaching the three days these glorious three days when i was talking to the disciples in john 14 he knew that these three days are in front of me i'm going to die i'm going to resurrect all right i'm going to be ascended and i'm going to sit if all of that was all we needed he wouldn't say i will pray the father he will send you another comforter Please hear all I'm saying so you don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying what Jesus did is incomplete. No. Let's look at it this way. The Bible teaches us in the book of Hebrews, all right, that any law, I mean, any, any will written by a man is not brought into force until the death of the testator. All right. So Jesus, therefore, being the testator, all right, he dies. And then that brings the new covenant into play. You understand that? So now we can say, oh, that is dead. Let's go for the reading of the will and know which aspect of the will was apportioned to us. But the good news is this. Daddy dies, so the will comes into force. Daddy now resurrects to ensure that every one of us, I mean, that's a good shouting ground, all right? So he died, but then he's resurrected to ensure. Now, double assurance. So he's in heaven, all right, as the Lord and administrator of the church, head over the church. His head, all right? He's alive as head of the church. He now gives us the Holy Ghost to be your helper. Please understand this. Walking with you through this journey on this earth that you may become all that he died for. Oh, glory to God. You need to get this. Because having died, we need to walk in it. We need help to walk in it. We need help to walk in the reality of everything. Listen, he could have said, well, I'm resurrected. All right, so you guys are free. But he told them, stay in Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. Meaning, now that I've paid for everything, you now need the helper, all right, the great Holy Spirit himself, to come inside of you. And then he moves into you. Hallelujah. He comes into you. So then you can now literally function like me. Are you getting this? That's how it's going to happen. So the Holy Ghost lives in you. If it wasn't so important, Jesus wouldn't say he needs to come. Right? I say, well, my death is sufficient for you. No. He died and resurrected. Now we could be new creature. Now we can have, like we read last week from Ezekiel 36. All right. God said, I'll put my spirit within you. So now the spirit of God can come into you and I. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Hallelujah. The spirit of God is now inside of me. The spirit of God is now inside of me. The spirit of God is now inside of me. Why? To bring me into the fullness of everything Jesus has ever done. Do you understand that? Now, Ephesians chapter 1, Paul was praying and he said, all right, that, you know, God will grant unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened. Do you know what that is? It's basically saying that, listen, the Holy Ghost will keep throwing more light. Because that's why he's here. All right? 
in John chapter 16, all right, from the 13th verse, it says, How be it, when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears is what he will speak. And then he will show you things to come. The Holy Ghost will show you things to come. All right, but Jesus now said, all right, in the 14th verse now, he will take of mine all things, all right, and reveal it to you. So the work of the Spirit is to bring us into the reality of all that Jesus has said. Bring us into the reality of all that Jesus has done. So you and I are, are now, you know, helped by the Spirit. That's why he gives us revelation. So that you come to, remember the first day it dawned on you if he ever has something in the Bible. Maybe, maybe protection dawned on you. Maybe, um, healing dawned on you. Maybe prosperity. You just, I got it now. I mean, even when, you know, I, I remember Kenneth Copeland, all right, when prosperity dawned on him, it wasn't when he got a million dollars or when he got a thousand dollars. No, he was reading the Bible, Galatians chapter 3. And then he saw the 14th verse of Galatians chapter 3, that the blessing of Abraham will come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And he ran. <laughs> I love that story each time I, I, I remember it. And he ran to where his wife was, you know, saying, Gloria, Gloria, we're rich, we're rich, we're rich. And I'm sure I was wondering, okay, where, how? And then he showed us, see, see, all right, that the blessing of Abraham will come upon us. So we're in Christ to the bless. I mean, that is awesome. I mean, the first time, you know, Bishop Ripple, you know, if you've ever heard a story, all right, caught the revelation of prosperity. He locked himself up in a room with Kenneth Copeland's book, Gloria Copeland's book. His Bible was there three days. All right. And then he came out. First words was, I can never be poor. It wasn't because he got a million naira. It wasn't because, you know, he got, you know, a hundred thousand naira. It was that revelation, that intangible that produces the tangible. All right. And this is the department of the Holy Ghost. He floods your heart with revelation such that symptoms can still be ravaging your entire body, but you're just full of light, full of revelation. Like, no, I am healed of the Lord. And but one that, but we see your symptoms. We see the readings. All right. We, we, we see, all right, your, your blood pressure. We, we see everything. It, it's abnormal. All right. But glory to God. That's exactly what happened to Abraham. Bible says against hope. He believed in hope. All right. There was something so much in Abraham. That now changed what was going on on his outside. That is the department of the Holy Spirit. You need to understand this. So that you, you don't just read the Bible. Maybe, maybe you tried reading this morning or over the weekend. And then you saw a verse and you felt your heart stay here. But you kept feeling, no, no, no. I said, I'm reading three chapters today. I must finish my three chapters. I must finish my three chapters. I'm sure when you began reading your Bible, you said to the Holy Ghost to enlighten you. He was about to do that, but you just got so you know, rigid and said, no, 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 my three chapters. You're trying to read the word to know more of him. He's now saying, hey, I want to tell you something. I want to show you something. Now, it's good to have your three chapters, two chapters, one chapter, five chapters. But when he says, stop, I need to show you something. It could be one verse. It will blow you. <laughs> it will thrill you. It will transform you. This is the department of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that this is the department of the Holy Ghost? He's the one bringing us into all that Jesus has done. Is one bringing to us into the reality. It can be done just by ourselves. Oh, even the preachers. I, I, I'm, I'm an anointed teacher. I'm called to teach. I have an apostolic assignment to teach the body of Christ. All right. To bring us into certain realities. I can't do it without the Holy Ghost. You can't hear me without the Holy Ghost. You can't get what I'm saying without the Holy Ghost. And you find out even when I'm speaking or saying certain things to you, He's enlightening. Um, you know, he's throwing more light. He's connecting dots that things I never said. You might even hear something and say, oh, uh, you know, you said this. And I'm like, I, I never said that, you know. And it was because he wanted you to say it. I remember a couple of years back, right? I, I was in this church service, you know, back on campus. And I'm myself and my friends. And somewhere, all right, in that service, the pastor asked us to open, you know, you know, to a particular portion of the Bible. And I did. And I can't tell how many minutes it was. I was, I was, I was there, but I, I wasn't there. So I, I opened the verse. I remember that that was the last thing I remember doing. I opened the verse and from that verse, like the Holy Ghost began to talk to me. Like maybe 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. So when I came back as it were, now please understand this. This is not a, it wasn't a physical experience. Like I literally left the service. I was in church. Like for a number of minutes, however it was, I couldn't tell you I knew the pastor was still speaking. 
like the Holy Ghost was just train light, train light on things, connecting like I was in church, but in another church. That's the department of the Holy Ghost. So when I resumed, as it were, my consciousness back in the service, you know, hey, I might need, I'm like, I've missed a lot. What was it that the pastor was saying? But I walked out of church that day with the Holy Ghost establishing many truths into me. But see how he did it. He began with the pastor having to make reference to a verse. Me opening the verse, he took me on from there. And then just, whoa, 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 whoa. Glory to God. That's the department of the Holy Ghost. That's the department of the Holy Ghost. Now, many people have such things happen to them or read their Bible and see things that maybe even their church pastors haven't seen and then they grow big heads. No, you don't need the big head. Paul already says knowledge puffs up. All right, it's love that edifies. It's wonderful when you can be granted by God so much revelation and you still are relatable. All right, you still have to remind yourself that all the time I didn't know what I know now. So I need to be you know, you, you, you have to be graceful because it's, you knew what you knew by the grace of God. So you have to be gracious. All right. Towards those who don't know. And, but they also are not listening to what I'm trying to say. You sometime in your past might not have listened to what someone else was trying to say. Maybe later you came to understand it. Okay. Maybe you always understood. Just God is patient with us, isn't it? And love is patient. So understand this. Hallelujah. Oh, but glory to God. There's a department of the Holy Ghost called wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Wisdom, where you're reading, you've read it five times, you've read it ten times, and it just dawns on you. Oh, hallelujah. It just dawns on you. And sometimes you could quicken that aspect up by meditation. All right, you just pick a verse in the Bible and then just mutter it again and again to mutter means you just speak quietly, speak softly to yourself. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I mean, you said it like it didn't mean anything, all right? But you say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater. Hallelujah. Greater is he that that is in me than he. And then after like maybe two weeks, some maybe three days, different things really for different of us. All right. So maybe five days, you just tongues on you differently. You know, maybe maybe you were a bit scared when you hear sounds at night. Now you're not. You still want to go check, but not the usual. What was that? Something is changing in you. Why? The revelation is growing. You are engaging that department of the Holy Ghost so it can flood you with revelation. Listen, where there is light, there's no darkness. So fear is darkness. Confusion is darkness. And the entrance of God's word gives light. So you give time to meditation. You are giving room for the entrance of the word. It will knock away. It will dispel that darkness of fear. It will dispel that darkness of doubt. It will dispel that darkness of confusion. It will dispel that darkness of hurt or bitterness or hate or anger. Because you give room. You give time to the word. You know, people get to say, oh, um, I'll get better with time. And over the years, I've told people, nobody gets better with time. Time really doesn't do anything much if you don't do anything with the time. If you don't decide, for instance, to start improving yourself, you naturally don't get better with time. You don't get better. Life just, you, you just go with the tide. You just flow with it. All right. You know, maybe, maybe you have a sour relationship with someone hurt and all. And say, well, with time, with time, you know, um, our relationship will get better. It won't get better if nobody takes a step. If nobody uproots the wrong seeds that have been sown and plants in the right seed. It won't never, if relationships by themselves don't get better. Someone needs to make a phone call. Someone needs to break the ice. Nothing gets better. Somebody needs to forgive and walk in faith, in forgiveness. Please understand, to forgive takes faith. Right? You forgive and then you take steps of faith. All right? You take steps of faith. However it is, you take a step. And say, I'm going to forgive and I'm going to act it out. I'm going to find the person's birthday. It depends on the kind of relationship it was. All right. And say, happy birthday. I'm going to send a gift. I'm going to place a call. I'm going, you, you do that because revelation is not enough when you just say, Oh, I caught a revelation of love and then it doesn't have action. All right. Dad Higgins said something very many years ago. He said, it's knowledge that is acted upon that brings results. Knowledge acted upon that brings result. And really, James chapter 1 already says that it's the doer of the word that is blessed. Haven't you ever heard a great teaching, maybe like you're hearing right now, 
Yeah, great teaching, right? So maybe you're hearing a great teaching and you're like, feel, oh my goodness, that teaching bless me. Bless me. Oh, bless me. Yeah, there's an impartation that comes upon us when we hear great teaching. But James now says it's the doer that is blessed. All right. So the full are blessing, the richer blessing or the complete package, as it were, of the blessing that teaching brought to you will be enjoyed by you when you act on the word. So when you hear a teaching on love work, when you hear a teaching on praying in the Holy Ghost, when you hear a teaching, you know, on just listening more and more to God's word, when you hear teachings on being led by the Spirit, when you hear teachings on meditation, like, man, that blessed me, man, that blessed me, great, but it won't bless you so much until you get it done, until you become a doer of it. Do you, do you understand that? So we don't just become people who amass so much revelation, get involved in argument and just, you know, you know, you know, different Bible discussions with people, and then our doing quotient is low, right? Our knowledge quotient it's like super big, all right? The ratio is like high, and then the doing is low, all right? No, you, you've got to step up the doing. You've got to step up the doing. But as I was saying, and, and but that, I mean, that rabbit trail I just followed was, was rich. Someone needed that, all right? Just someone needed that. Praise God. Glory to God. The revelation knowledge is a department of the Holy Spirit. Hey, oh, that you may flood our eyes with revelation. And it's interesting when you see what Paul was saying in Ephesians, right? When you see, because this is part of the help of the Spirit. Has Jesus resurrected? Yes, he has. He didn't resurrect last night. But the church needs a revelation of the resurrection. How? That means you have to go to God's Word. And then you read the Word. Right? Lord, what are you saying? And then you read. You're seated together with Him in heavenly places. Then you read. You're seated together with Him. Then you read. You're seated together with Him. Then you shut your eyes. I'm seated together with Him in heavenly places. I'm seated far above principality and power. I'm seated far above. I'm seated. Ah, principality, power, rulers of the darkness of this world. I'm seated. All right, over names. Every name, principality, power, dominion, might. Name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious, man. I'm seated. I'm sick. Meditating. I'm seated. I'm seated. I'm seated. I'm seated together with him in heavenly places. I'm seated together with him in heavenly places far above. I'm seated together with him in the heavenly places far above. You need to do that. Far above. And then you're chewing on it. Far above all principality. I am. I am. And this will help you, especially when you, you, you realize you need to enforce your victory over satanic or demonic forces right maybe you're afraid to relate with certain family members because they get involved in some fetish or diabolical activities and then you keep running away from them no they should run from you day after a while you say we don't understand it we've tried you nothing is working all right they should say that that's your testimony some might not even say it to you they'll say it behind your back but you just know because a thousand may fall at your side ten thousand at your right hand it will never come near you do you understand that You've got to get this. This revelation, please understand, is a department of the Spirit. Revelation knowledge is a department. Is the Spirit. He's with you to make the Word come alive. But you don't just sit and say, Holy Ghost, make the Word come alive. Make the Word come alive. Make No, you go to the Word too. You listen to the Word. You put some solid teachings on repeat. You endeavor to listen to them. You saturate your atmosphere as often as you can. Just listening. You go on a, on a prayer walk and then you tell yourself, okay, this teaching is 40 minutes. I'm going to go on a 40 minute prayer walk. I'll go 20 minutes down, 20 minutes back. I'll, I'll go 20 minutes straight up or 45 minutes, you know, straight up. You know, if you have that ample time, all right. Oh, I'm, I'm going this way. It's a 15 minute walk to the bus station. I'm going to walk down the 15 minutes to the bus station and I'm going to engage the word. Why? Because the entrance of the word give a light. And Ephesians 1, all right, Paul is praying that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, all right? Like King James puts it, or some other versions say, flooded with light. If it will be flooded with light, I must have been providing light. And have you ever experienced this? The Holy Ghost could throw light on a topic you were not currently studying. A matter you were not currently looking into the Word on. But that's also likely because you are engaging Him in certain other areas. So you've provided an open heart for him to show you things, to teach you things. Do you understand this? Revelation knowledge is a department of the Holy Ghost. 
revelation knowledge so that the word will just move from just mere head knowledge. Are you there? I know you could quote um, 1 Peter 2, 24. You could quote Isaiah 53. Maybe even, you know, take communion. You break bread over your health and all, but you are still afraid of sickness and disease. The issue, therefore, is beyond the breaking of the bread, is beyond the quoting of the scripture. All right? No, it's you've not settled it in your heart by revelation. You've not engaged the Holy Ghost. Oh, when you sit with the word, Oh, thank you, Lord. It could be greater is he that is in me. You want to use again. Someone says, does that verse affect? Listen, that one verse, all right? First John chapter 4 and verse 4 smashes like everything you're dealing with. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Did you get that? Greater. It, it helps you where protection is concerned. All right? Greater is the prosperity. I hope you know there's prosperity. I we learned that last Sunday that the presence of the Holy Ghost in you is prosperity in you. All right, the ark was in the house of Obededon, all right, and then Obededon prospered. Do you understand that? And you are the very temple. You are the carrier of the presence of the Holy Ghost. And Isaiah tells us, all right, when the Spirit is poured from on and high, we read all that last week, the wilderness becomes a fruitful field, the fruitful field becomes a forest. So you've got to understand that my presence and the presence of the Spirit in me is the presence of abundance. I'm that tree planted, hallelujah, by the rivers of water that I bring forth my fruit in my season. My leaves would never wither. Anything I do will prosper. You've got to engage. Engage. Please get this. Revelation knowledge is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Revelation knowledge. Because Jesus died. And then you find believers, you know, all of us, is, you know, you know, we find, you find the generality of the church going through things as though Jesus never died. All right. We're still having our legs amputated. We're still being diabetic. We're still having, you know, things happen to us like, but someone took our sickness and took our pain. That means you and I have to come into that revelation. So I'll say in first John 4, 4, greater is he that is in me. Greater is the prosperity in me than the lack and shortage that is out there. So I prosper. I prosper. Good as the love of God in me than the hatred and the bitterness that is going on out there. Or even the one that is trying to walk in my brain towards this person. I refuse to hate anybody. I refuse to despise anybody. I refuse it. And then you say that to yourself. You say that to yourself again and again and again. Guys, please remember, revelation knowledge is the department of the Holy Ghost. I know usually when I talk about meditations like this or people hear teachings like this, they go... How many things do I meditate on? And I understand that. I mean, it's a very valid question. Really, like how many things do I really meditate on? And I've come to understand that there are certain verses, right, that just deal with a whole lot of stuff. Like First John 4, 4 that I just mentioned to you. Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I will not lack. The Lord is my shepherd, I will not lack. The Lord is my shepherd, I will not lack. All right, now that I'm at it, just this entire week, all right, that just ended on our speaker platform audio, all right, or you could check me on Google Podcasts or Spotify, we just thought through a solid week, all right, of the Lord being our shepherd. Please find me on Spreaker, all right? Just Google, all right, uh, Google Podcast, just search, all right? Or if you're watching on Instagram, go to my bio. There's a link tree there. Just click Morning Faith Post. Please listen to it because the Lord would love to lead us. He wants us to be led by His Spirit. Reverend Keith Moore would always say that the answer to a thousand and one questions, really the answer, so a million and one questions is be led. Be led. All right. And Ken Hagen, all right, said, if only we're led by the Spirit, there are a thousand and one things we'd never have done. And I know you know that. If only we're led by the Spirit, a thousand and one things. Imagine the number of hurts we've gotten into. Imagine the number of wrong relationships, number of wrong investments, number of accidents that could have been very much avoided. Seriously avoided. If only the church of Jesus would be led by the Spirit of God. In, you know, you know, oh, but she, she, she hurt me. Oh, but he hurt me. The Holy Ghost. Listen, when, when Peter denied Jesus, you know, Jesus could have just felt Peter with everything I've done for you. Peter, this is the height of disloyalty. Judas, this is the height of it. And Jesus could have just told them how, you know, grossly disappointed he was in them and how, you know, and, he saw it. He saw it coming. And that's the department of the Holy Ghost. You say, but that was Jesus. No. Jesus lived on this earth as a man filled with the Holy Spirit. All right. Please don't forget Philippians chapter 2 tells us that he laid aside his heavenly weight and glory and came in the form and fashion of a man. 
So he had to be baptized, all right? All right, by John, and then full of the Holy Ghost at baptism. Hope you remember that. And then in John 4, you know, Luke 4, 18, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, has anointed me. He had to be anointed like a man. So Jesus operated, functioned in the departments, all right? Engaged the departments of the Spirit the same way you and I expected to. He's the sample son. He came to show us how better, all right, we could live, how better we could function, what better, all right, you and I could do. And guys, that is something we need to give attention to. Please understand this. So, so, like so much. All right, so much. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're led by the Spirit. We're led by the Spirit. We're led. We're led. We're led. We're led. Oh, many heartaches. Very many, many, many disappointments will be knocked out. All right, Jesus was on that. Told Peter, listen, you know, with all your promises, how many times have people promised us? And we believe their promises. And then we felt hurt when they turned back. Right? When their promises were not set in anymore. So when Jesus, you know, Peter was telling Jesus, nah, you know, I'm even willing to die for you. And Jesus said, nah, before the cock crows three times, you'll be gone. You're going to deny me. You're going to deny me. So when it happened, Jesus was like, oh my goodness, Peter, you broke my... No, he saw it coming. Revelation knowledge is a department of the Holy Ghost. Revelation knowledge is a department of the Holy Ghost. We could also refer to that spirit of seeing and knowing. Depends on the context you're looking at. When you see and know things before they happen. When you see and know things. Alright? Before they happen. It's a department of the Holy Spirit. And you and I must learn to allow him function the way he ought to. Dr. Pat Harrison, right, the daughter of Reverend Kenneth Hagen, alright, said that, you know, he, she, she gets to say, oh, I, I love the Holy Spirit. Because he's everything that Jesus said he will be. I love the Holy Spirit. Because he's everything that Jesus said he will be. She says that. Then she gets to say, if he's not to you everything that Jesus said he will be, it's because you're not allowing him to be all that Jesus said he will be. And, and this is just so true. So true. So true. So back again to that John 14 in the Amplified. Okay, Jesus is saying here that I will pray the Father. Okay. John 14, verse 16, Amplified. I will ask the Father and he will give you, all right, another comforter. He will give you. I'll ask the Father. He will give you another comforter. The word there is paracletos. So we find the Amplified giving us a sevenfold meaning. Comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby. So it's, it's, it's arranged you know, this way, you know. But a friend of mine a couple of years ago arranged it, all right, in a very beautiful acronym called Chassis, all right, and then, you know, for 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 us, you know, Chassis, you know, could sound like something new, something clean, of course, if you drive or you know a bit about cars and you have what's called, you know, Chassis in the car, all right, but Chassis just sound like something new, brand new. It's just an arrangement, all right, so you put the C's and then the H, all right, you put the C's, you put the H, you put the A, S, I, and S. You could just arrange that. So it puts in your mind the sevenfold meaning. So you have the comforter, right? You have the counselor. Then the H will be the helper. Then A will be advocate. S will be strengthener. I, intercessor. Then the last S also, you know, standby. Chassis, all right? Very, very beautiful. I mean, all right? I heard it from my friend a couple of years back and I've had to teach it. And many people are taught it. And I'm not sure most of those guys might even know who it came from. Some maybe thought, Maybe I originated it, but I, I didn't. And it's, it's, you right, nice, you know, uh, that, that is said, all right? For maybe someone's watching, like, you taught me that it came from you. Yeah, I got it from someone too. And I knew, I'm not sure if person got it from someone. I just, you know, <laughs> quite creative mind. Anyway, now I'm, I'm saying this because you and I have got to now understand if the Amplified helped us with this. Let's take a look at it. If we're not done today, then it's fine. We'll pick it up again next Sunday. But the summary is helper. You know, you know, we, we look at Psalm 121 from verse 1. It says, I lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who makes heaven and earth. And most believers get to interpret it as saying, I lift up my eyes to the hills or my help is coming from the hills. No, your help is not coming from the hills. He's saying, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Is my help coming from there or where would my help come from? He says, no, my help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. Please understand this, that the Lord is your helper. All right? The Lord is your refuge. The Lord is your helper. 
So Jesus now says, I am sending you a helper. Listen, guys, if Jesus were physically, literally, physically beside you right now, say, I'm here to help you. I know you're going to walk through the rest of your life with so much confidence. Ha! Huh? So I say, why are you confident? Jesus is here. You can't see him. I can see him. He's here. He's helping me. He's my helper. As real as Jesus would have been, that's how real the Holy Ghost is. Please get this. You and I might not appreciate it except by revelation. Again, and don't forget, revelation knowledge is the department of the Holy Ghost. So you and I might not appreciate this as we should. But the apostles, when Jesus told them, I will depart in chapter 16, verse 7. Uh, Jesus said, because I've said these things to you, and I sorrow filled your heart. All right, But he said, it is expedient for you, verse 7 of chapter 16. It is expedient for you that I go away. If I do not go, the comforter will not come. Alright, if I, if I, if I don't go, he, he won't come. But verse 6 is, you know, where I made reference to earlier, that because I've said these things to you, sorrow, I filled your heart. And 7 says, but I've got to go. If I don't go, he won't come. So they were sorrowful because, I mean, they saw him raise the dead, heal the sick, he healed Peter's mother-in-law, he walked on water, fed the multitude. Who else could be better than this? And he just said, no. The same spirit that worked with me to get this thing done is the same spirit that will be with you. So don't step out of Jerusalem. Stay indoors until he comes. And that's why they listen because they got the point. And then we just see them blazing all through the book of Acts with so much confidence. Peter's shadow, you know, healing the sick. Paul is aprons. I mean, miracles happening like Jesus was around. Why? Because the same spirit of Jesus, the very spirit of Jesus, was working in them, working through them. And he said, I will send you a helper. I believe, listen, it's a lack of revelation. It's gross ignorance, maybe unbelief. All right, because sometimes we seem to be more, um, we, we seem to value reasoning, all right, than God's word. And we need to put an end to that. So yes, you feel helpless. But as a child of God, do not say, I am helpless. Let, let's still see this 16th verse, all right? I mean, the, the 14th chapter, all right, of this same, you know, um, John chapter 14, right? 14 chapter, all right? <laughs> all right, so we're, we're there anyway. Now, so this, let's see the same. I'm, I'm back from 16. Maybe that's what I want to say. Now, look at it here in the 17th verse. Say, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, they can welcome, take to its heart, all right, because it doesn't yet see him, all right, nor recognize him, but you know I recognize him for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. Now look at 18. I will not leave you as orphans. That I won't leave you comfortless, desolate, bereaved, forlorn, helpless. I will come back to you. So it will be gross, gross ignorance or lack of revelation or just, just stubbornness to want to hold on to, I, I know, listen, I know you might be watching me, someone out there, and then you might be hurt, or maybe you're listening. I think, but things are not well, things are not, I'm just helpless. No. This is you ignoring the person that is called the helper. Capital letter H, guys. I mean, this is the helper. Please understand this. This is his mission. This is his ministry. To help you. And if he's here to help me, why hasn't he helped me? Have you engaged him? You know, we love to blame God for so many things. A number of years ago, I began to do stuff. Now, I may not do it to everybody, but I had to do it a few times. And that's this. When something happens to a believer, something goes wrong, um, maybe, yeah, not usually, of course, the first set of questions and all. Everybody's fine. Maybe, maybe wait till later. And then I like, um, did you see it coming? Did you see it coming? Did you perceive? Guys, more often than not, I get a yes. I get a, I, I felt I shouldn't have gone on that trip. I felt I shouldn't have gone to that person's house. I felt more, more often than not, more, listen, the Holy Ghost is always there to help us. He's there. And like I quoted Dr. Pat Harrison some minutes ago, if he's not to us all that Jesus said he would be, we're likely not allowing him to be what he's supposed to be. Jesus made an emphatic statement in the 17th, 18th verse. All right, of John 14. Let me read. I will not leave you as orphans. In bracket now, in parentheses anyway. Comfortless, desolate, bereaved. All right. I won't leave you in grief. I won't leave you without comfort, without, you know, consoling you, without helping you improve your situation. 
I won't leave you helpless. Help again is mentioned. I will not leave you helpless. No, no, no. That, that is to sink in. I will not leave you helpless. I will not leave you helpless. Please get this. He will not, no matter how helpless you feel, the worst you should say is things seem helpless. I feel helpless. The worst that you might utter because it will be gross, gross unbelief for him to say, I won't leave you helpless. Now, this is what happens to most of us. Maybe someone walks up to you right now and says, Thus saith the Lord, I know what you're going through. I would like to tell you, I've never left you. I'm always with you. You are not helpless. I am with you. I'm walking this whole thing out. You know, most times we receive it and we walk away from it and say, Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. But this is, he said it already here. And I love the way that Hagen always says this. The word of God is God speaking to me. This is it here. No matter the prophecies we're going to hear, it will still line up with the word. And he has said. He has said. Remember Hebrews 13 and 5 also? He has said, I will never leave you. Never forsake you. He has said, child of God, you are not helpless. There's someone called the helper. Oh, thank you, Lord. Do you want to pause for a minute and... Maybe you've not talked to him in a while. Maybe you've blamed everybody, including God. Do, do you want to have a change of heart right now? Or maybe maybe you've had to butt your head against the wall, trying to make something, and you're like, okay, can I stop for a minute and acknowledge my helper? Because your helper is your advocate, he's your counselor. He will point it out and say, that's the wrong route, this route. That's the wrong thing, this way. All right? A guy proposed to you, you said yes, and ever since you said yes, you just felt awkward, uncomfortable. Yes, sometimes because you move from the known to the unknown. How's it going to be? You have questions in your heart. Yes, it could be that, but it could be you've stepped into the wrong move. You've stepped into the wrong boat. Why not just keep, oh, if I break up again, my friends say, am I stupid? No, your friends are not going to be the one you're going to give account to when your life is over. Your friends are the ones that will mock you if your relationship it doesn't work at the end of the day. Listen, the person you owe it to the most is the Holy Ghost. He is your helper. Your helper. You told someone, I'll see you tomorrow by 2 p.m. And then you kept feeling awkward, awkward, something wrong. So take a moment, check it out, pray in the spirit. Don't override it. Please, don't override it. Pray in the spirit. Know what the spirit is saying. Know what the Lord is telling you. The helper lives in you. The helper is with you. Can we just acknowledge him for a moment? The helper. The helper is with me. The helper is in me. I am not helpless. I'm not helpless. Oh, menanam pradagados avaragadas. Acknowledge you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Inamanda. Kerobo Fernando Sukobe Fredegadoso. We are not helpless. Jesus said he will send help. You have come. You are the helper. You are the counselor. You are counselor. It means you will tell us better, far better than our friends can, our families can, because you know better than anybody does. Counselor. Oh, Holy Spirit. You are to us all that Jesus said you will be. We allow you be to us all that Jesus said you will be. Precious Holy Spirit, you are to us all that Jesus said you will be. So we allow you, we allow you, we take counsel from you. We take your counsel. We take your counsel. We receive your help. We receive your help. And we know this will minimize greatly the mistakes and the errors in our lives. This will minimize greatly the hurts, the pains, the disappointments, the dangers, the accidents, and the deaths in our lives. We know, we know because you are the helper. Helper, helper. Helper. Oh, fa fa non fra raga do fa leke dasa. Ah. Somebody talk to your helper. 
Acknowledge the ministry of your helper. Acknowledge. If you have to change your mind and say, I, I like to do things. No, you have a helper. 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 Even if he says, shut the project down. Please be willing to do so. Please be willing to do so. Please be willing to do so. Helper. Ola ba prada gadosa man prodo godoso min kara gadasa min koro godusi mianda hada hasa. Oh, that you show us what we see not, Holy Spirit. That you teach us what we know not. And you prepare us for that which has been prepared for us. Oh, you show us what we see not. You are the helper. Many roads in front of us, but you know the right road. In Psalm 32 and verse 8, you said in your word, you would instruct us. You will lead us in the way that we should go. You will guide us. You will have your eyes on us. In NLT, he says, I will instruct you and lead you along the best pathway for your life. The best. Many roads in front. Many great roads in front. But he alone knows the best. He alone, he said, I will instruct you. I will lead you along the best pathway for your life. The best pathway, the best, the best. Oh, Hana Hatesi Kavanta. Prorokusimanta. When things look gray, no, to him they are black and white. He sees them clearly. Oh, Hebrews tells us, all right, in chapter 4, the 13th verse, that all things are naked and open before him with whom we have to do. He sees all things. Kenaman Pradagadasa. Mom Porogodu Fenin Karaga. Isaiah 48 and 17. He said, this is what your Redeemer says to you. I will teach you to profit. I, he is our teacher, our prophet. He will teach us how to excel. He will show you things. He will show you things. He's your helper. Receive his help. Acknowledge his help. Receive his help. If you want to pray in the Holy Ghost, go ahead and do that. Because that's one of the things you will do to help to sensitize yourself. And then you come back to this verse even after. After we're done tonight, you know, come back. To this verse, come back again and read, or to the couple of verses now, read John 14, 16, 17, 18, read it in the Amplified. Then you go to John 16 and verse 13. He will guide you into all truth, not some truth, all truth, marriage truth, investment truth, childbearing truth. Even when your doctor says, we don't know what's wrong with you, he will guide you. He would even go and reveal things to the doctor so they know what to do. He would tell you what to do. Don't forget, revelation knowledge is the department of the Holy Ghost. He is the spirit of wisdom and revelation to show you things, to show you things, to show you. Oh, hallelujah. We acknowledge your ministry. We acknowledge your ministry. We acknowledge. We acknowledge your ministry. We come on, Pradisa. We acknowledge. Papa te papa. I tapata pasete bata. Hey, mon prorogodoso menko buro pishke pishe pishke pishe pishke pishe hata. We pray in tongues and sensitize ourselves more. We listen to your leadings because you know better than a thousand and one of us would know. You know far better. And we know that when we follow the leadings, oh, we follow your leadings, our lives will be better. Our lives will be improved because you are the helper. You are the help sent from heaven. You are the help sent from heaven. You are the help sent from heaven. We are not helpless. No, 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 never again would we say we are helpless. Because we have help from heaven. We have heaven's help. God himself came in the person of the spirit to indwell us, to help us, to give us victory. Kai amon fradagadasa. Oh, glory to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, shata mon praragadose, mon praragadose, minka. You are the helper. We acknowledge your ministry. Hallelujah. We acknowledge your ministry. We acknowledge your, we give room. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the helper. You are the one counseling and guiding. You lead us 
along the best pathway, along the best pathway of our lives. You lead and instruct and guide us. Glory to God. Listen, we are not helpless. We are not helpless. Let's put an end to statements like that. No matter how bad things are. David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. He didn't say, when my heart is overwhelmed, I give up. I give up. Too many believers are too sense ruled. Where we allow ourselves, and I understand that, you know, we, we get, allow ourselves to get overwhelmed. No, David said, when I'm overwhelmed, the right response is to go to the rock higher. So the right response is to allow the helper. Oh, whatever disappointment you might have faced. Mm -mm. Turn your face to the world and say, no, I've got a helper. I've got a helper. And, and it's not, you don't have to feel the goosebumps. Who no. I've got a helper. It gives me counsel. It gives me direction. It gives me strength. It gives me strength. I'm not helpless. I'm not helpless. I'm not helpless. I'm not helpless. Read through those verses, all right? See the ministry of the Holy Ghost to you. Meditate on it through the week, all right? Meditate. We'll pick up again from this. Meditate all through the week. Chew on this. Read through again and again. He is my helper, my counselor, comforter, helper, advocate, intercessor, standby. All right? He is. He is everything to me. He's everything the Word said he will be. He's everything Jesus said he will be. So I allow him to be all that he's supposed to be. All right? So thank you. All right, for always tuning in, for always joining in. Please, you could still share it with, with someone all through the week. Let somebody get blessed, all right? Let people get blessed. Let them know. And if you need the audio, please, if you um, just find um, the speaker platform, download the audio right there, all right? And if you have a question, something you could drop comments where you are, or please send an email, all right, to Larry or Nosanya Ministry 01 at gmail.com. Larry or Nosanya Ministry 01 at gmail.com. Just, just send in an email. Let's, um, we'll be glad to hear from you and to help you whichever way we can. All right. So blessings. Enjoy the help of the Holy Ghost as the word said you would. All right. Bye. Hi. My name is Larry Rex and I'll say welcome to my YouTube channel. Here we will be having a solid time with God's word. We will learn who we are in Christ. Listen, there's so much God has put within us that makes the new creation. That's the born again person the most treasured possession on this earth. Wow, <laughs> yes, and that's it really. So much to uncover. Bible says that God has put so much treasure in us. We have treasure in this earthen vessel. Imagine us week after week, episode after episode, digging in by revelation, by the help of the Holy Ghost, into all those amazing truths on who we are, what God is to us, what Christ has done for us. Imagine how much we would be you know edified and transformed so please subscribe to this channel and then just turn on notifications so that once anything drops you will be the first to know it will be awesome being in this community with you looking forward to great times together god bless you